Hi Carol, it's me and I'm going to be working with your painting that you submitted um, for critique. And as I look at your painting on the monitor, it's, um, it's beautiful. So I did read some of your um, questions and I think I've, I'm prepared to answer and show you uh, some demos, okay? So hang in there and we will get this taken care of. Um, the background, I read that you had some concerns about the, I'm going to turn the camera now. Okay, so I, what, I, what I'd like to do on my critiques is um, I, print out, I print out your image, okay? And I actually printed both of these out in, in uh, color and black and white. I wanted you to see the black and white, and I'm going to scan both of these and send them back, and I'll scan this, and you sh you'll have it by the time you see the video, um, so you can follow along. But I really, y y you look at this, this is definitely in shade, and you were worried about it being brighter than the one in front, but if it's, it's, it's okay if it's brighter, because there's, it's more of a contrast with the shade right here. And that's, that might give the appearance of it's brighter. But when you look at it, black and white, and even in color, I, I think this one really stands forward. So um, don't let the contrast of the, of the shadow and the lightness of the, of the light, you know, flushing through the tips of those petals, um, don't let those fool you. So, Okay, so that is um, one question that you had. And also another question was, um, earlier on you talked about your pigment uh, running when you glazed over um, into this area. So what I did was I went ahead and glazed right over this because I'm going to show you how you, if you feel like you have to lift something back out, you can do that. Um, but also, I, I glazed over it because I wanted to see if it, you know, um, would move for me, and then we could discuss. But, but when I look at your painting, um, and I look at the yellows here, I really do think maybe the yellows were a little, um, the pigment might have been on a little heavier than <clears throat> usual. And the fact that it, uh, it moved and it ran is not that big a deal. Because um, we, we can also go back in, I can show you how to bring some of these um, stamens back out. So we've got a lot to do, and I'm going to get busy. And, and first things first, so I'd like to talk about the background, okay? Also, you were concerned about, um, you had some concerns about the um, line drawing and the reference photo, and you, you stated that my... My drawing, my drawings, my reference photo was much different than my painting. And on this one, yes, and I explained why on this one. This one I just took my time and I added a little bit more. And I looked at other reference photos and just added my own ideas. Um, you know, just because it's not on the reference photo, of course, of course you can add more. Um, even in, you know, in my class, you're more than welcome to add more. And as a matter of fact, that's what I encourage you to do is to take the background, take the background and, and make it your own, you know, have some fun with it. So, um, without further ado, here we go. What I did on, on this piece right here, um, I added some blue right in here because I wanted to imi kind of imitate what was going on in this area right here. So I could lift, I'm going to lift some pigments and show you how to um, get some depth back into your background. Now, the line drawing, um, when you look at the line drawing, there's a lot of little shapes. Those are all where the, all the highlights are um, in the background and everything else is middle to dark tones, okay? So that is going to answer that question. Now let's uh, okay. Let let's start with this, and I think you might even enjoy this because when I um, did my one of my first backgrounds, I painted everything. You know everything that I saw, um, thinking that that's that was the right way to get um, to get the proper look of um, you know the leaves and everything being in the background. But you really don't. You don't have to. You can just, um, it's 
somewhat out of focus. It's just shapes. And when you lay the shadows in that run across, uh, that run across the stems, that's when it, it kind of helps um, the eye realize that this is in front, middle, back. You know, the, the, the shapes indicating with what value and the tones, um, that'll, that'll help get that depth in there also. So basically on yours, you have one, two, okay? Um, so we're looking like for about four to five, maybe six um, values within, within um, the background. And they don't necessarily have to be anything, um, you know, a leaf. It doesn't have to be a stem. It could be an indicator because that's exactly what's going on right here is, is that we have an indicator that there's a light hitting a little spot of light on the leaf. You know, a little bit of light on the, on the stem, a little bit of light on another stem, okay? And that's why the dr line drawing was drawn out the way it was. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about scrubbers. I don't know if you're familiar with scrubbers or not. It's something that you can use to lift your pigments, and I'm, I, I'm betting that you have heard of it. <laughs> okay, so here are my scrubbers right about here, okay? And you can purchase them. You can make your own. And um, all I did was take some, some brushes that I wasn't real fond of that I purchased over the years, and you can cut them short. And they're kind of short and stubby, and they have a nice rough, not super rough, but, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't bounce like, um, like a one stroke. Okay. Here we go. Okay, one second. I'm going to... Okay, here we go. I heard somebody uh, coming. I was going to close the door. Um, so here, here's the scrubber. And you're going to scrub, scrub, scrub. Lift, lift, lift. Fun, right? So you can start bringing out some of the, some of the light, um, sunlight that's indicated in your reference photo and on your line drawing, okay? And then you can take um, tissue and dab it, dab it, dab it, dab it, okay? How about that? So you can try that on this and do it, see, and do it there. And then, and then you don't have to do the whole background. You can um, actually, you can bring this, okay, lift it. And I'm not scrubbing that hard, so you just kind of lightly, adding water and you are adding water and then lifting you know scrubbing lifting and and then, oh wow that came out pretty bright um and you could take your you could take your brush tap 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 in the bottom of your water tap it and clean it you want to clean it okay so that's very fun okay so here here you go and like let's say you want to bring something brighter right here Cool. Okay, and then and then tap tap tap. How about that? Do you see that? That's pretty bright. Pretty bright. That makes me very happy. Okay. So think about you know you don't have to draw out the shapes. You don't have to draw them out. You can you can indicate light light light. Okay. Alrighty. So over here, a little bit more. Boy, once you start, uh -huh. I'm not going to stop. Okay, nice. Scrubbing was introduced to me by my friend uh, Guy Magellanus. He's the other, um, he's the other artist that you see on Art to Art. <laughs> and I used to be really against it because I thought it did damage the paper. But he has a way of of scrubbing and getting in and getting out really quick and not not fiddling around with the. Um, with the paper too much so but this would be good this would be really good for you you probably don't even have to scrub um, you probably could take just a flat a flat square like this one's an angle brush okay and it's not quite bouncy like the one stroke it has a little bit more of a um, but it's soft enough you could take a little bit of water on your brush 
Uh, let's see, where can I go? Well, let's talk about this up here because that's what I want to talk to you about. Let's say you wanted to lift some of the um, the glaze back out and you wanted to lift some of the paint from the stamens because you wanted to bring those back. You, yeah, I don't know if this is the area that you were talking about where the the everything bled when you glazed over it, but I'm imagining that that's that might have been what happened, you know, um, in that area. It looks, it's hard to tell in your, in your photograph here, um, but um, I'm, just, I'm just imagining that that's where you, most of your glazing was happening. And then you could take your, um, you can take a clean tissue, okay, tap, lift, and then let it dry. And then once it dries, you could go back in, and if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to take a smaller brush, I took this one right here and cut it up. See, and it's it's pretty small, and I even have a smaller one right here. Okay, just for those, just to get those little um, areas right there, you could take this and um, okay, let me lay a little bit more water on there. Okay, and then get in and get out. Okay, and there you have some of your um, some of your stamens are coming back. Um, okay, so let's move on from from there. Now, when I look at when I look at your poppy down here, you can do a little bit more of a of a glaze down there because when you look at the reference photo. I'd like to see that glaze so, so my eye doesn't go there. I want my eye to be right here and then up in here, okay? Now, let's um, just take, okay, let's talk about glazing. Because I really do believe that maybe when you glazed um, and, and you said that some of your pigment moved, you might have been applying a little too much pressure. So, <clears throat> here we go. I'm going to go ahead and glaze, okay, and um, mixing up my phthalo blue, and I'm, at, I'm going to add a whole lot of water, okay, and I want you to see, here, I'm going to go this way because that would be better. I want you to see right there, do you see how much water I'm going to add right up in here? Cleaning this all off adding a whole lot of water so it's even a little bit more so it's not going to be a real heavy glaze so I'm I'm I'm, I'm pulling my brush I'm pulling it and pulling it and and I'm loading it up okay right there and coming over here boom 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 yeah go ahead just lay that in there and de uh, so when you glaze does it have to be one big long stroke no it doesn't it really doesn't um I'm just trying to I just trying to set this area back just a tad. You can even put a little bit of, of a shadow right in the middle there, and then pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, and then stand back and say, "Okay, have I have I um, achieved what I was looking for? Do I want to put a little bit more?" Um, and I'm going to say yes to that. Okay, just a little bit more now. If you want, you can actually add, I'm going to add a little bit of, um, you can add a little permanent rose or you can add a little bit of permanent alizarin crimson. Okay, there you go. There you go, right there, right there, right there. A little bit more. And you can add, add some while it's still wet. Just go ahead and drop that in there. Okay, right there. Okay, so that's going to be it for now. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll post this for you, and I'll post and I'm going to send you your um, your hard copy of your of the corrections that I spoke about, and I'll send you the uh, black and white the black and white photo. Okay, okay. Talk to you later. Bye bye.